Good morning, and welcome to St. Juliana Falconieri Parish. We especially welcome all visitors to our parish and those joining us online. Today, Father Mike will lead us in the celebration of God's love for us on this Feast of the Holy Family. You will find the readings on page 875 of your hymnal. Please take a moment to stand and greet those around you. Good morning. Please join in singing our gathering song, <laughs> Angels from the Realms of Glory, number 332, number 332. to come and worship and so we did and together we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God his Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've gathered together to celebrate the feast of the Holy Family let us remember the way that we are a Holy Family with Christ in the middle who keeps us together for the times we've neglected the Lord, we ask pardon and strength. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life.
to give us the shining example of the Holy Family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. I will make your reward very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what good will your gifts be if I keep on being childless and have as my heir the steward of my house, Eliza? Abram continued, See, you have given me no offspring, and so, no, so one of my servants will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. No, that one shall not be your heir. Your own issue shall be your heir. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. The Lord took note of Sarah as he said he would. He did for her as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time that God had stated. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son of his, whom Sarah bore him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Lord, in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, constantly seek his face. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen one. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgment prevails. He remembers. 
renews forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith he received power to generate even though he was past the normal age and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, for whom it was said, through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate and the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, 
a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome back. It's good to see so many back here today after Christmas Day. And uh, it's great that we continue the celebration of Christmas with the Feast of the Holy Family. And I begin this homily by sharing a story of a family that began with a husband and wife who centuries ago lived in a small rural village that wasn't known to many people. In fact, it was insignificant in the eyes of the world. The husband was described as a righteous man, a person of good standing. And his loving wife, who was also very faithful, together they were blessed with a child and they lived a humble life. They lovingly raised their boy, nurturing him in his trade, in his faith, and in the traditional values of the family. And the boy grew in obedience, he grew in intelligence, he grew in wisdom, and he grew in their grace. And if this story sounds to you like a story of the Holy Family, you're correct. But it's also the story of another family, a family that was established in a rural town about 20 miles north of Florence, Italy. And the boy born to the couple was born in the year 1267. And in his early days as a boy, he worked as a shepherd, tending the family sheep. But one day it was discovered that he had the most unusual, the most unexpected, the most extraordinary gift. It was discovered that he painted a sheep on one of the rocks that was in the area that he was tending sheep. And based on this discovery, the boy's father took him to Florence so that his gift could be nurtured. He was presented to the masters who were painting the great paintings in Florence of the time. And the boy observed them, he watched them, and then he entered formal study. And his gift was nurtured, it grew, it was fostered, and it was shared with the world. At a young age, the boy was established as one of the greats. In fact, he's named the greatest painter of his era, perhaps one of the greatest of all time. His name, as some of you might know, is Giotto Bondoni. And he painted most of the frescoes in the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi, the beautiful frescoes. He also painted much of the sacred art in Florence, in the grand churches, and also in Rome. And uh, he loved painting, but his first love was his wife. He met a wife, and together they had eight children. They raised that family in the faith. They raised that family in love as he went on to become this great master. One of the optional opening prayers for today says, Father in heaven, creator of all, you ordered the earth to bring forth life and crowned its goodness by creating the family of man. So God entered our world. He took on human flesh in the form of a child. He entered into the family, the traditional family unit. And in doing that, he crowned the family as the world's goodness. He could have entered in a number of ways, but God chose to enter our world into the family. And we've seen 
through the example of the Holy Family. We've seen through the witness of Giado's family that there's joy in the family. And that joy really lies in discovering God's gifts that he's bestowed upon us. It lies in fostering those gifts. And then it also lies in presenting those gifts to the world. We have in our church, and Father Mike will congratulate me on doing this because he loves to point these out. We have in our church a window that speaks to the presentation of the Lord. It's right by the third station. Some of you would have to turn around to see it. Others would have to kind of stretch their necks, but it's right in the middle. And you see Simeon, you see two doves, and you see Jesus being presented at the temple. It's a beautiful window that can lift our eyes and our minds and our hearts to the Holy Family. We also see it up here with two turtle doves. That's the fourth joyful mystery for those of you who pray the rosary. So we have these reminders, and they're simple, they're beautiful, they're colorful, but one of Bondoni's or Giotto's masterpieces, it's in the Basilica of Assisi, it's the presentation of the Lord. And he took this simple concept, this simple image, and developed it from a theological perspective, from an example that highlights the beauty and the joy of a family. And towards the middle of his painting is St. Joseph. And St. Joseph is not the focus of the painting. In fact, he's behind one of the pillars. So you can just see his face a little bit and his body a little bit in that painting. And how fitting is that for St. Joseph, who we know has said nothing in the Gospels. He was silent with his words, but he spoke so loudly as a father who prayed for the well-being of the family, who was courageous to take his family where God wanted them to go, who protected them, who served them without any recognition, without any interest for himself. He served his family with great love. And what a model St. Joseph is for us fathers today. A little bit more central to Giotto's painting of the presentation, of course, is the Virgin Mary, dressed in royal blue, fitting for a queen, the queen of heaven, the one who brought Jesus into the world in her womb, now carries Jesus with open arms, presenting Jesus, the savior of the world, to Simeon, who receives him with great joy. And Mary, what a great example for mothers, the one who's devoted, the one who's so tender and compassionate and loving to her children, the one that stuck with her son, even in the most difficult of circumstances, the circumstances that Simeon predicted. Also in this picture, we see Anna, the prophetess, and we see Simeon, there's no mention of spouses that they had. There's no mention of children that they have. And what an example for us, especially for those who are not called to the sacrament of marriage, those who are not blessed with children, or those whose family circumstances have separated them from family. What an example they are for family. An example that says all are welcome in this family of faith, and all are called to journey together and holiness. And we see that in Anna and in Simeon. And regarding holiness, in Giotto's painting, you see Joseph, you see Mary, you see Anna, we see Simeon. They all have these golden halos over their head. I've heard it said they're like gold plates behind somebody's head. And, um, you know, we see other people in the picture as well, like you would see at a baptism. They don't have those golden plates behind their heads. And this says to us, that sometimes when we reflect on our own family, when we reflect on our own experiences, we can be hard on ourselves. We can recognize our shortcomings, our failures. We can recognize our challenges in our family, and we can fail to see the golden crown that God has bestowed upon our family. And the message today is one of hope, because all those people who don't have those crowns, their eyes are fixed on the child Jesus. And like us, they're on a shared journey towards holiness. Like us, they're lifting their eyes from their sinfulness up to the grace of God. And they're able to see that crown. They're able to journey towards it together. And that's a message for all of us as a family of faith. So we're all called to this holiness. We're all called to recognize what awaits us. And what awaits us is joy, but we don't have to wait for it. In living out this call, which is difficult, we're gonna fall short. And when that happens, we're called to forgive one another in the family. 
We see this all the time. As a father of 25 plus years, I can attest that we fall short. The answer to that lies in forgiveness. And I've heard it said that a family should be not like a courtroom, but like a confessional. In a courtroom, there's prosecution and there's defense. In the confessional, there's admission of fault. There's contrition. There's the giving and there's a receiving of mercy and forgiveness. And there's love. And when we focus on that, when we live with compassion and love, as we're called to in the readings, we can achieve that holiness together as a family. And we've been taught today through the example of the Holy Family. We've been taught through the example of Giotto's family. We can reflect on our own experience to recognize that there is a crown of goodness over us. We can recognize that we are on a journey to holiness. And we can recognize that there's joy today to be experienced in discovering, in nurturing, and in presenting our gifts to God and to the world. So on an evening when the world celebrates the passage of another calendar year, when we look forward to a better 2024, let us celebrate the joy and the gift of family, God's crown of glory on creation. And let us follow the example of Giotto's family, of the Holy Family, and let us live up to our family calling as well. As a father, as a husband, as a brother, as a son-in-law, and now as a deacon, you can be assured of my prayers for all of you, this Feast of the Holy Family. May you have a blessed day. May you have a happy and healthy new year, growing in peace, growing in love, and growing in joy. God bless. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made, consubstantial with the Father, whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God, the loving Father of the whole human family, let us pray in faith, trust, and love. For Holy Church, that we will bear with one another through love and holy perfection, and so become a holy family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and all world leaders, that the dignity of human life and family values will be proclaimed in just laws and legislation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners and ministers of Holy Family Cathedral Parish and the Catholic Grammar School in Orange, that the presence of Jesus in word and sacrament will grow there. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the newly married and the long since married, that their families will abide in love and mutual understanding and know the presence of Jesus in their lives, keeping them together as one family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that God will bring them to himself. For all who are ill, that God's hand will heal them. For everyone for whom we've promised to pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of the Masses this Sunday, for the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, 
and the repose of the soul of Francisco Carreno, the happy birthday Monsignor Larry Baird, and the health and well-being of Bob Cardinali, and the ministry of word and sacrament at Holy Family Parish in Orange. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and Father of all, bless our families with your love. Direct us to you so that we will find you, the source of our joy, unity, peace, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory song, O Come Little Children, number 322, 322.
altar table is ready now. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. Let us accept the sacrifice in your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer to you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that, as we recognize in Jesus God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, and all who minister in your name. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your great mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with saints Juliana and Peregrine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him. 
him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace and God bless. Peace and God bless. Peace and God bless. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please join in singing our communion hymn, What Child Is This? It is number 330, 330.
It's important to continue to thank all of the uh, faithful liturgical ministers of St. Juliana. Your time and talent given to our parish liturgies is never without notice and always with appreciation. Thank you to all the visiting priests, the two wonderful deacons, lectors, extraordinary ministers of the Holy Eucharist, hospitality ministers, audiovisual ministers, choir members, altar servers, office staff, and of course, Chim, who help with all of the celebrations, especially at Christmas here at St. Juliana. I extend thanks to each of you who gave me a gift during Christmas, sent me a card, invited me to your party, or greeted me kindly. I have an enormous panettone, multi cannoli, Italian cookies, most of which I've already eaten. Chocolate came from Ohio and locally, very much appreciated. And wine, please don't forget all the wine I got. Most of it's been shared, although a lot of it I just consumed myself. And thus, with any cash that I was given, I bought a larger, a larger suit, new, shoe, new shoes, and clerical shirts, plural. A beautiful Christmas ornament was given me. It's lighted for many to see. Thank you so much, St. Juliana. You're kind and generous to me. Father Raphael has returned safely to Uganda. He'll be back with us at the end of July through August. Monday, January the 1st, tomorrow, is not a holy day of obligation in the Los Angeles Archdiocese. There will be only one Mass tomorrow. It'll be at 8 a.m. If you confess missing Mass on January the 1st, please also confess missing Mass on other days before January the 1st, or not listening to my announcements, and be, be ready to do the penance. I want to thank the choir for um, Christmas gifts that, you've, that you give our congregation, and today a, a fiddler in the choir. Sounds crazy, no? But we certainly appreciate it. Choir, you're most appreciated by us. And the deacon for this wonderful homily about Giotto. You, you, you didn't. You didn't mention Giotto's chapel in, in Padua. When you go to, to Italy and you go to Padua, where St. Anthony is um, right at the train station, there's the beautiful Giotto's chapel in Padua. Also in Padua is the University of Padua. Um, what, what do you see at the University of Padua? 
well, Galileo's lecture chair, remember the professors um, uh, taught from, from chairs. Galileo's chair is there. And also, if you're involved in medicine, Harvey's Anatomical Theater is at the University of Padua, along with the uh, Giotto's Chapel and the um, Basilica of, of St. Anthony. Uh, it's just absolutely a wonderful place to see. But all of Italy is wonderful. I mean, why, why belabor the obvious? Let, let, let us stand and pray. Bring to those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share in their company forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us singing our final hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 313, 313.